All right, welcome back to section four of the Scrape the Planet course. Um, section, yeah, section four of the Scrape the Planet course, that's right. Um, this one's going to be a doozy. You're probably already looking at the timestamp thinking like, holy crap, how did, how did this one last this long? We're going to be laying out step by step the functions and the skeleton code, basically the backbone of our Kevin Bacon scraper. Um, it's going to take a while. It, it's I want us to understand, you know, really from a base level how we're going to solve this problem programmatically, um, and I want us to be at least relatively specific and um, explicit with our design choices early on so that we understand what we're doing once we start filling in the code. Um, so if you haven't watched the last video, I definitely recommend going back and watching it. It's going to give you an understanding of the problem that we're going to solve. We're going to be solving the Kevin Bacon problem, basically going from one actor and finding out how many hops, how many levels of depth we have to go through in order to get to Kevin Bacon, who is a very famous and well-connected actor in Hollywood. So here's how we're going to do it. First, we're going to define the functions. So, we're going to define the functions. Then we're going to define the flow. And then we're going to go over our main loop. Well, we might actually, let's, let's define the flow first. So let's go flow, functions, loop. I think that'll be a little bit more, um, I guess, kind of organic. So let's go with the flow first. Let's start with the flow. So the flow is basically how we're going to get from step A all the way to step Z. Um, and there will probably be that many steps. So our flow starts with user input. And what is the user going to get us? The user is going to get us a actor name because we're going from an actor name to Kevin Bacon. So what we need to do first is we're starting with our root. So that is our root. We need to grab all of the movies that the root has been in. So we're going to grab the initial movie list is what that basically is. For root. And then with that movie list, we are going to iterate over it and grab all of the actors that that actor is related to on the initial level. So then we're going to get from that movie list an actor list. And then from each of those actors, we're going to grab their movie list. And for each of those movies, we're going to grab that actor list. And we're going to keep iterating through this until eventually in one of these actor lists, these are kind of our main target lists right here. We hope to at some point find Kevin Bacon. So that is our flow right here, our flow. So that's marked up. We've, we understand the flow. It's relatively basic from this level. It's going to get much more complicated once we actually start coding it out. Um, now we can start looking at functions. So the way I like to do functions is just kind of looking for things that we're doing repetitively. So what are we doing repetitively in this list? We are going from an actor, so functions, and I like to think of functions. Um, this has actually come up in the mathematics courses that I'm looking at. Um, functions are kind of transformations between data. So I'm going from one piece of data all the way to another. In this case, there are a lot of cases where we are going from an actor name to a movie list. So that's something that we're doing several times. So we've got it once here, 
got it once here, and this is a loop that we're going to be going over multiple, multiple times. So if we're running this, um, if we're doing this kind of enrichment, if we're going from this transformation from an actor name to a movie list several, several, several times, it's probably best to make that a function. So we're going to have an actor name to movie list function. We're also going to have a movie to actor list function. So that's another thing that we're doing several, several, several times within this loop where we're going from an individual movie to a list of actors. So relatively simple there that there's not just a ton you know, to, to, to really like write home about. That's that's kind of very basic transformations. And once we actually start writing this code out, um, it's it's going to be, you know, very simple. Um, since we've already written scrapers, essentially what these functions are, are miniature scrapers. They're, they're scaled down, very low limited scope scrapers. Um, and what we're going to call this are, these are request making functions. We're gonna call them rec functions. And that's going to have a bit of importance later on. Um, not, not a ton, but we do want to note that when we're making these, um, these requests, they're, they're putting load on the server. And like I said earlier on, we want to kind of limit that and treat that in a special manner. So we do want to make note that whenever we are calling to a, an external web server, we want to make note that the function that is um, is making that call is a requesting function. Now we're also going to be storing this stuff in a database. So we're going to create caching functions for actors and caching functions for movies. This isn't really a data transformation function. This is just a data caching function. So basically we're storing this information for later analysis. It's actually going to be very, very important. And uh, about two videos from now, we'll talk about why. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it is going to be very, very important later on that we are storing this information. But these are not requesting functions. These are, we'll call them internal functions. Um, meaning they're only hitting our own internal assets. So internal functions. And uh, not necessarily as important that we make note of that because we're not worried really about knocking over our own databases. Um, you know, we're not making that many requests and it's all within our, uh, our network and other users aren't using this stuff. So we've got our basic functions. Now let's define our loop, which for some reason has three O's. Um, so let's look at our loop. So we're going to start outside of our loop. So here's our loop right here. We're gonna start outside of it and we're going to start with a root. So root, we're going to get their link. And um, like we saw earlier, that's non-trivial. Um, we need to get their link from that, uh, that, search, that search function within IMDB. So we're gonna get their link, we're gonna get their movies. And then, um, you know, it, it's, it starts to get complicated now. Um, so within our loop, we want to test a couple of things. Um, and in order to do that, we kind of have to create a couple of different uh, data sets. So those data sets that we're creating are movies that we've tried. So we'll call that tried movies. And those are just movies that we looped through. We lo looped through all of the actors that were in that movie. Um, and we found that it wasn't a Kevin Bacon movie, basically. So we iterated over all of the actors that are in a movie said that, okay, Kevin Bacon's not in that movie. We're going to add it to a list of tried movies. We're also going to have the same thing for actors. And this is going to be a little bit different. Basically, we're going to iterate through all of the movies that an actor has been in. This, this, this kind of like, you know, one to many relationship of one actor to many movies. We're going to iterate through all of those movies. And if Kevin Bacon is not in any of the movies that an actor has been in, we're going to add that actor to a list of actors that we've tried. Um, and that's gonna be important because we don't want to keep retrying the same actors over and over again. We wanna kind of start, you know, we're going to be creating a ton of breadth. So, you know, I was saying earlier that basically we're gonna be solving this with a breadth first search, 
and our breadth is going to grow exponentially. So let's just say there's a hard limit of each actor has only been in a movie with five other actors. Well, we've got our first actor has been in a movie with five actors. So that's a one to five relationship. Now each one of those actors has been in a movie with five actors. So now you've got a, you know, you've got 25 new actors here. And then each one of those 25 actors has been in 25 or, or in movies with 25 other or five other actors. So you see this breadth starts to grow, you know, massively, even when we're artificially scoping this down pretty majorly. Like obviously, you know, each one of these actors has been in movies with hundreds of other actors. So our breadth is going to grow in a big way very, very quickly. So in order to kind of curtail that a little bit and to scope in our depth as much as possible, we're going to make sure that we're not retrying the same actors over and over again. So basically, as time goes on, yes, we are growing that breadth like in, in a huge way, but we're not doing it needlessly. All of the actors that we're going to try at the next level of depth, um, so at you know this level of depth, we at least know that those are new actors that we haven't looked at before. And the movies that they've been in, um, because we're tracking the tried movies, we're not going to retry um, each new movie and keep adding actors that we've tried before. And, you know, it, it's it basically, if we don't track this stuff, like, from the beginning, we're never going to really get anywhere. We're not going to find these connections that we really want to. And we're going to spend tons of time, you know, sending useless requests to a web server, like duplicate requests. And we really don't want to do that. That's that's A, incredibly inefficient from our standpoint, and B, it's going to end up hurting, um, you know, basically hurting the, uh, the, the server later on, you know, because we're making all of these duplicate requests that we don't really need to. Um, so it's a good thing to do to kind of limit that, um, you know, both for your own, you know, semi-sanity and for the, uh, the website administrators. So basically what we want to do is we want to make sure that the current level of depth is, um, you know, or, or there is a non-zero amount of actors within the current amount, the, the current level of depth within this list of move or this list of actors that we have yet to check. So we're also going to have a master list of actors. And what this is going to do is it is going to track the actors that we have not yet checked. Um, so we're going to want to take actors out of this list and we're going to want to add actors to that list. Um, so while basically this, this, this is going to be a massive while loop. So while we've got people in the actor list, it's greater than zero and I'm not going to write out length for that. Um, and we are under a maximum depth. That's going to be another thing that kind of curtails how long this is going to run. We're going to define a maximum depth. Um, so basically what that means is we're going to search through this level of depth and we'll call that depth level one and this level of depth and we're going to call that number two and this level of depth and we're going to call that number three. And basically we're going to say we're not going to set this program to run forever. We want to basically stop it and say at this level of depth we're not going to search anymore. We're, we're going to go ahead and stop. And we need to probably look back at our spider and see if something's wrong. Because, you know, from my research on this problem, you actually don't really need to go that deep. Most of the time, these actors have like a one to three level relationship with Kevin Bacon, meaning a, a level three relationship or a level three of depth is actor one is related to two which is related to three, which is related to Kevin Bacon. So there are basically two hops or, or three hops basically from actor one to Kevin Bacon. Um, so that is a, a, a Bacon number is what they call it a lot of times of three. Um, so we want to have a maximum depth where we just, you know, knock things off. And so depth is less than max. 
Um, and we've got one more um, very important condition. Not Kevin Bacon. So, and KB not bound. Um, so those are going to be the conditions of our main loop. So while we have actors within our actor list, while we are not over or not equal to the maximum level of depth, and Kevin Bacon still hasn't been found, the most important thing is we uh, increment our depth. So that's vital. We want to make sure that, that depth is going up so that you know we can actually track whether or not our, our current level of depth is, is less than that maximum depth. Um, so we're going to go through all of the actors for actor and depth. And this is this is a different let's go ahead and call it depth level. Depth level is basically all of the actors within one horizontal level of depth. Like I said, we're going to be going through this from a depth pers uh, depth first search perspective. Um, so we're going to be going through you know, all of the actors you know, at, at a certain level of depth all at the same time. Um, so we're going to go through you know, that, that actor and first we're gonna make sure that it's not within our triad actors. Not in triad actors. It shouldn't be, but I like to explicitly code that in um, just to kind of make sure that we're not doing those duplicates because they really can slow you down quite a lot. Um, so then we're going to go through all of their movies. So for movie and that actor, actor underscore movies. Then we're going to grab the actors in that movie. And check and see if those are Kevin Bacon. And we're going to iterate through all of the movies of every actor on that level of depth, trying to find the, you know, the, the crown jewel, the Kevin Bacon, um, within the, uh, the movie that's related to that, that actor. If there are no movies that contain Kevin Bacon or, or that Kevin Bacon acted in, related to that actor, we're going to move on to the next actor, and then the next actor, and the next actor, and we're going to keep doing that at every single level of depth. So, you know, this is going to make a bit more sense once we start coding it out, but it actually makes even more sense on the whiteboard. So if you're lost, totally fine. I'm probably not explaining this perfectly well. Just stick around until we get to the code section, which will be very, very soon, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit more explicitly then. So, um... You know, really, that's that's kind of like the body of the main loop. But for every single time that we find that a certain actor, um, you know, basically is not related to Kevin Bacon, we are going to add that actor to the list. And for every single time that a movie does not contain Kevin Bacon, we're going to add um, that movie to that, that tried movies list as well. So let's jump into the code. So we're gonna have our imports, obviously. That's present on every Python program. I'm gonna take off this dumb glove. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a section for our imports just so we know where everything is relative to you know, it's, you know each other. So we're gonna have our imports. We're gonna have our database info. I like to keep that at the top. And we're gonna have our functions. And then we're gonna have our main. We'll go ahead and write that out. Um, I always forget that like very, very basic rubber stamp. So if name, we'll go ahead and write this stuff out just because it's not complex code. It's not actually part of the functioning or anything like that. Um, it's basic stuff. been writing Python for years and years and years and still have not like necessarily memorized that. Um, we'll set a return here. Um, so now we can start getting to writing out what functions we want within this. Um, so like we had said, 
we are going to have to get the actor's link several times. And that's going, we're going to be taking advantage of um, that search workarounds that we used before. So we're going to start with an actor name. And this is going to get the link to the actor's page using the search function. You're going to define the actor link. We're going to just set it to nothing right now. And we're going to return that actor link. So then we are going to get an actor's movie. So we are, that's that function that we talked about before, where we go from an actor. Yeah, so an actor name to a movie list. So technically we are going to be going from an actor link to a movie list. So that's going to be def, we're gonna say get actor movies, actor link. We're going to set that to null and then we're going to say we're going to get the movies that an actor was in using their actor page from the function above so this is where i would like to kind of you know since the movie object or the idea of the movie is relatively important to you know kind of the way this program is going to function I like to define the data structure of that and this is going to be very very easy so a movie object object is equal to this is just going to be a dictionary with a movie name and a movie link so both of those are going to be important. Obviously, the movie name um, is important just for later caching that information. And the link itself is going to be what we use to scrape that page for, um, for actors that are related to that movie. So this is going to be a list of those objects. And we are going to return that list. Right. So that is relatively straightforward. Then we're going to go from a movie object. So def, this is going to be get actor, oops, all caps, actor list. And we're going to go from a movie object. And we are going to return a list of actors related to the movie object. Now this I decided through testing was best just, you know, sticking as a dictionary, which is going to be an actor name to actor link. There's really not that much else that we need to do. We could technically do that with get actor movies. Um, don't really know why I decided not to do that, honestly. Um, but we're also going to create a, a second kind of actor object that stores a little bit more information um, later on. So it doesn't really matter to our object. Um, and this is going to be a list. So actor list, we're going to return actor. Actor is one of those words that I, I always feel like I'm misspelling it and I never am. You know, kind of like those, those words that I guess I probably typed so often that you know they started to feel weird i don't really know that maybe that's just the sensation that i i alone have felt um so we basically have all of the functions that we need here um, or at least all of the important ones and um now we're going to talk about just the simple caching functions so this is going to be def cache movie Um, cache movie is going to take in a movie object and it's just going to cache a movie in a movie table. So that's not going to return anything. It's just going to be a database function. It could probably return whether or not the store was successful or not, but it doesn't really matter. And we're basically going to copy this and do the same for actors. And this is gonna be actor object. 
and this is going to be cache and actor and the actor table so pretty straightforward there nothing super complex um, now let's move on to main so we've got our main function here and that is obviously going to be where our main loop presides so first we're going to grab the actor name um, from the user's input so that's going to be passed and the calling of the program and we're going to go ahead and code that out just because it's simple so that's just going to be actor is equal to sys arg v and that's going to be arg v1 we talked about it earlier um, so if you don't understand exactly what's going on here fairly simple and straightforward but you can probably watch um, some of the earlier videos to get a feel for um, exactly how i'm doing this and if we don't end up um, getting that second argument or that first argument then we're gonna print out an error that says please um, input an actor name between quotes and we're gonna return from this and I like to return one if there's an error that really is just kind of good habit I can't tell you exactly why um, because it's really only prescient in like more complex programs but it doesn't really matter so first and foremost we're going to set up a database connection set up the DB connection I do that first just because if you do it later you can kind of like do it in the wrong place and end up like iteratively connecting to the database and that that's nasty and you also want to exit whenever you can't connect to the database it's not going to be as important right now since all we're doing is storing data but later on hint hint we are going to be actually reading from that data and if we can't read from that data then we want to go ahead and um, exit early on so that we can see exactly what's wrong with our database um, so then we're going to grab the link for the root actor so grab actor link for the first actor we're gonna say actor link is equal to get actor link with actor fairly straightforward we don't have to actually like create an implementation of this get actor link function um, we're just going to call it and for right now it's just going to return an empty string um, you know so that's that's kind of why I like to make these functions actually return something just because you're not going to get these errors though I do have yeah I do have sys throwing errors there so I'm gonna go ahead and import sys just because it's gonna bug me so let's import sys so let's return so we've got the actor link here um, and then we're going to grab a list of all of their movies. So grab the list of all of their movies. So this is going to be actor. Uh, let's just call it movie list. Since we are talking about a list of movie objects, we're going to call it movie list is equal to get actor or get movie, get actor movies. That's what I called it. Um, with actor link passed in fairly straightforward there um, so after all of that we're going to start initializing the variables Initializing variables so here is where I'm going to initialize our depth so depth is going to be initialized to zero um, we're going to initiate Kevin Kevin Bacon and this is going to be the variable that tracks whether or not we have found Kevin Bacon. We're going to say that's false initially. And then we're going to create a list of tried actors and tried movies. We're also going to create a maximum depth. And for my very important, like, constants I, I like to capitalize them you know just I, I, I guess a good habit bad habit I don't really know because um, we'll also do the same thing for I actually forgot to initialize our database variables so our max depth is going to be equal to five and let's go up here and initialize our database variables since we actually already know those so our DB user is equal to test DB 
our host is equal to, I believe, I'll go back and check that, but I believe that's what it's equal to, um, something like that. And our password is password. And I'm actually gonna pull max depth up here just because that's where I'm keeping all of the constants already, so I might as well put them up here. So let's go ahead and stick max depth up there. I didn't put an underscore, I'm gonna put that there just because I'll probably screw that up later. All right, so we've got all of our data initialized, all of our important data. Um, so now we're going to create the while loop. So this is gonna be the big main loop. So main loop. So this is going to be while the length of the actor list, which we also have to create, is greater than zero. So while there are actors in the current, um, the, the current uh, level of depth, then we're going to say and the depth is less than max depth and not Kevin Bacon. So these are going to be the conditions that we keep running. Basically, these checks are going to happen at every single level of depth. So every time we move up a level of depth, it's going to check and make sure that we actually have actors within that level of depth. It's going to check to make sure that that level of depth is not greater than or equal to the maximum level of depth. And it's going to check to make sure that we haven't already found Kevin Bacon. Because we've already, if we've already found Kevin Bacon, then we obviously don't need to continue running to the next level of depth. All right, so let's actually go ahead and initialize this actor list um, list. This is fairly important, and it's going to hold actors that we have not yet tried um, for our next level of depth. So this is going to be actor underscore list. This is a fairly big deal, and we're actually going to go ahead and initialize it with its first object, and that's because we already have our root um, root actor object. So we're going to say actor name is equal to actor, which is what we passed in through the command line. Then we're going to say actor link is equal to, I think it's just a, yeah, actor link and movies. This is going to be our movie list. And that is going to be our actor list already initiated um, or initialized. Um, and that's going to make sure that we do, in fact, pass this first uh, this first barrier. So while all of these things are true, while we are basically starting on our next level of depth, we're going to go ahead and increment depth. So all of these like easy things um, that don't require like actually grabbing data and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and um, you know actually write them out. So that's that's kind of like a relatively important part of writing skeleton code is, you know, you're not actually writing the important code out, but you are kind of knocking out those really, really easy but important initial steps, like incrementing our depth variable. That is obviously very, very important. Now, here's going to here's a thing that might get a little confusing. Um, so. We basically only want to go through the actors at the current level of depth. And in order to do that, we're going to create a copy of our actor list that only contains the actors or the actor objects at that current level of depth so that we can iterate only on those actors while adding new actors to the main actor list. So basically we will have I'll go back here and write it out. We'll have a large actor list. Erase a little bit right here. We'll have a large actor list that is going to contain every level of depth. So we're going to have actor list. That is going to be our main list. And that's going to have every actor at every level of depth and blah, 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 blah. But within our loop, since we're only going through one level of depth at a time, we're going to create a copy. I'll 
show you what I'm going to name that here in a second after I've kind of explained this. That only has actors at the current level of depth. So that at each level of depth, once we grab new actors, so new actors to test at the next level of depth, we're only going to add that next level of depth onto the main big actor list. Now, why is that important? It's important because if we add that to our copy instead, then we're basically constantly adding on to the current level of depth instead of creating a new level of depth to go into on the next iteration of our while loop. Um, I ran into a pretty significant um, and interesting issue that I'll go into over um, on the next video um, with the, the actual process of copying. But essentially what happened is, is I, I entered into an error um, where I was constantly adding on to the current level of depth. So this, this for loop that we're about to enter that iterates over every actor on the current level of depth it just kept going infinitely because I kept depending on to that list and then moving on to the next section. So basically if I started with a list of five, I would go on through my loop, I would go on number one, and during the course of that loop, I grabbed a bunch of actors that I needed to append on the next level of depth, but instead I just added them right here. So on the second actor, I ended up looking at the length of the list and the list had like tripled the list of actors within the current level of depth. So that you end up basically within an infinite loop here um, because you're looping through a list that constantly appends on top of each other. Now, fun fact about Python that I did not know about at all um, is that Python does array copies by reference. And for those of you who have not done um, any kind of like lower level um, programming, there's this idea of copying an array, which is like the genuine copy. You're taking one list and you're going through every single item within that list and copying it over to another list. Instead, Python does it by reference, which means you're basically storing a pointer to the original list. So what I did, was we're going to create our um, pre-actor list, um, which is basically just supposed to contain the actors who are at this current level of depth. And I called it pre because it's right before we go through that level of depth. And I said is equal to actor underscore list. And I did it like that. Or actually, I think, no, I just left it like that. So why is this bad? Um, I didn't realize it was for quite a while. Like I said, it led to that, that infinite loop situation because whenever I decide to append to pre actor list right here. So if I did pre actor list dot append one, I'm just going to say that it contains a list of, you know, of a, 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 a list of numbers that's actually appending it to pre actor list and actor list which i did not realize um it's it's fairly annoying the fact that it does that um i don't really know why it would do it that way but the workarounds to pass it by value instead of by reference is just doing that it's a very strange notation it's basically saying every single item within actor list copy it over to pre actor list and that's just going to take every single item you know, within actor list, which is the current level of depth, and it's going to co copy it over here. So we're only going to contain the actors that are at the current level of depth. And then when we decide to append in order to say, okay, at the next level of depth, go through this actor, we're going to append them to this master actor list right here that we're actually iterating over um, instead of appending it to our current level of depth. That was a long explanation. I'm at like, yeah, this is a 40 minute recording already. So that was a long explanation. Just basically, um, you know, look up what it means to pass by reference instead of passing by value. It's a very important programming term to understand, especially if you, um, you know, basically, if you're planning on doing any lower level programming like C and C++, 
both of those very highly um, depend on um, you know pointers and you know references and things like that. So make a copy for the current level of depth. So now we're going to go through every actor in the current level of depth. So for actor and pre actor list, we're going to go through all of them. And as long as they are not if actor, and we're going to start actually messing with the, um, or, or reading from the values within actor list or within the actor object. So if actor at actor name, not n, which is probably my favorite notation in Python, tried actors. So as long as it's not an actor we've tried, now the way this is going to be written, it shouldn't ever be an actor that we've tried. But just in case, you know, I, I like to have these checks here. Yes, it does add an extra level of indentation. Yes, it is an extra like comparison, string comparison you have to do. So it's not the most efficient thing, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to read through each and every single actor. And for each actor, we're going to say loop over every movie that actor has been in. So for movie and actor, I think it's just called movies. Yeah, so movies. So we're gonna loop over every single movie they've been in. And we're gonna make sure that it's not in the tried movies list. So same exact disclaimers there, probably not the most efficient or necessary thing to do. So for movie, and I think it's just called it name, not in tried underscore movies. So you'll also notice here, I'm not going to store the movie or actor objects within tried actors or tried movies since I'm doing what is essentially a, an array check every single time, um, you know, I think it would be a little bit more efficient to iterate over a list of strings rather than a list of objects that you have to get the strings out of. Um, that might be getting too far into the weeds and I'm still not doing it the most efficient way possible, but um, you know, doesn't matter. So basically the, the big thing that we've got to check here is check and see if it's Kevin Bacon. Check if the current actor is Kevin Bacon. I guess I should capitalize the guy's name since I'm like making him a big deal in this series. Um, so we're gonna check and make sure that he's not Kevin Bacon. He shouldn't be because there shouldn't be any situation where Kevin Bacon makes it into the uh, list of actors, but we're gonna check it either way. So if not, um, well, actually, this, so we don't really need to check for that. We do need to check and make sure that Kevin Bacon hasn't been found already because later on we are going to enter a situation where we might find Kevin Bacon at this point in our code. So if not Kevin Bacon, I don't know why I lowercase it there, but whatever. So we now are within uh, our, our movie, basically our, our movie variable is what we're checking for right now. We want to get a list of actors that are within this movie. So um, actor list, uh, no, that's our, meet, our our large actor list. We don't wanna do that. So actors is equal to, we're just gonna do get actor list and we're going to pass in the movie object. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Um, I'm just making sure that I've got all of my um, my variable names right in this, because if I screw that up, then we're kind of in trouble. Um, so now we've got a list of actors. Um, so we want to iterate over that. So for, um, starting to get complicated with these, uh, the actual actor variable names. So for cur actor, let's do it that way. And actors. So we're gonna check over all of the actors within this movie. So we're going to check and see if they're Kevin Bacon. So let's comment this just for the sake of clarity. So for each 
actor that is in this movie related to this actor at this level of depth. So that's probably a little bit too verbose. We probably don't need to make that long of a comment, but whatever. Um, you know, just kind of trying to keep this clear because obviously we've got nested like for loops, if loops, everything, or if statements, everything. So we want a certain level of kind of clarity here. So we want to check if we found Check if her actor is Kevin Bacon. If not, add the cur. If not, and we haven't checked this actor yet, add them to try actors. So we're going to check and see if the actor is Kevin Bacon. So, if cur actor is equal to cur actor, I think it'll be cur actor dot actor name. It's equal to Kevin Bacon. Then we're going to set Kevin Bacon equal to found. True, not found. Um, and we're going to do a print here for diagnostic purposes. I'll leave that blank for right now. Well, I guess we could say Kevin Bacon found at depth and we'll print out the depth level. Make this a print formatted string. So that's if Kevin Bacon is found. Um, we're just going to set Kevin Bacon equal to true and then further on up the chain, it's going to actually exit our while loop or, or this for loop and our while loop. Um, so we don't really need to worry about that. So if not, else. So Kevin Bacon, we don't need to reset Kevin Bacon to false, obviously, because Kevin Bacon is going to be false already. Um, we're going to add that actor. So um, tried actors dot append actor or cur actor, and that will be actor name all right and we can actually go ahead and print out the movie too and movie that'll be movie at name all right so i think that's really all we need to do um aside from caching we'll, we'll go back through here and make another pass at um at caching so basically we, we've we've gone through here and we've gone through every actor within the list of actors that's within this movie if we haven't found kevin bacon at the end of all of this so our for loop for the movie is right here so we want this check to happen right here so if it's still not kevin bacon if not Kevin Bacon, then we want to add this movie to the list of movies that we've tried. So basically, I'll explain this in a comment. We've looped through every actor in this movie. If, if we haven't found Kevin Bacon in the list of actors in the movie we add this movie to the tried movies list so basically if, if we've looped through every single actor within the movie we still haven't found kevin bacon we've reached this point this point is to kind of clarify um after the actor iteration so the actor iteration is right here. So it's after the actor iteration, we're gonna exit that, we'll exit this, we'll exit this, and we'll land back at the end of this iteration of the movie for loop. And if we haven't found Kevin Bacon still, then we're going to append this movie to the list of movies that we've tried. So tried movies dot append, and we're just going to do the movie that's name. 
probably best that we print this out as a diagnostic as well, just to kind of like have a running list of movies that we've already gone through. Um, this will also show us, you know, if we aren't correctly appending this, or if we aren't appending it in the right place, it's going to show us, hey, you know, here's a log of all of the different movies you've tried. You've tried this particular movie like 16 times. Um, so we'll be able to see it pretty clearly in the logs, um, which is basically what debug statements are. They're logs within the like command line interface. Um, so Kevin Bacon, not an movie and its movie name. All right, so we've iterated through all of the actors in that movie and we've now iterated through every single movie that is related to this actor. If at this point we still haven't found Kevin Bacon, so we've, we've iterated through all of those actors, or we've, lit we've iterated through every single actor, um, or every single movie, sorry, and every single actor in that movie um, within this list. Um, so if the actor still, or if Kevin Bacon still hasn't been found, basically, then if not Kevin Bacon, then tried actors dot append actor at actor name. Um, so let me explain that one more time because I, I, I think I'm getting kind of like foggy brains with all of this coding. So we've, at this point, we've iterated through every single movie that this actor has been in. And we have not found Kevin Bacon at this point. So if Kevin Bacon still isn't found, we can say that that actor is not related to on a first level basis. So there's not a, a movie where this actor and Kevin Bacon are both in the same movie. So we can go ahead and append them um, to the list of actors that we've tried, and we'll do a diagnostic for this as well. So F Kevin Bacon has not been in a movie with actor, actor underscore name. All right, so that's fairly basic, and we're, we're starting to get to Final, final crunch here. Um, so if we have found Kevin Bacon, we're already printing out. Let's see. We're printing it out somewhere. Yeah, we are. So this is basically the point where we're going to find Kevin Bacon. We're going to find Kevin Bacon by iterating through this list of, um, of actors within this movie. So... We're, we're already printing that out. We're already setting Kevin Bacon a true where we need to. We don't really need to do that anywhere else unless we were just very paranoid um, about making sure that we have, in fact, found Kevin Bacon. But we do need to go through a um, basically a, a teardown sequence. Um, so after this while loop has been run, we can assume that Kevin Bacon has been found or we've reached our max depth. Um, so we can actually test for that. So after the loop has been found, I've gone ahead, ahead and closed that loop just to kind of clean up our, our you know, real estate here. So if depth is greater than or equal to max depth, we're gonna print a diagnostic here. Um, we'll also say and not Kevin Bacon. So as long as we haven't found Kevin Bacon and we've exceeded or reached our max depth, then we're going to print and tell us that we reached max depth without finding KB. So if our length of our actor list is equal to zero, that should never happen, but Programming tends to surprise you. Um, and we'll make this an else if. And we're going to say, um, for whatever reason, current level of depth is non existent. Or the current size of the current. I can't even type. The size of the current level of depth 
is zero. That theoretically could happen if we enter some situation where we've tried every actor humanly possible and we have not reached our max depth and we've tried every actor humanly possible and we're just not going to find Kevin Bacon. I don't think that has even happened. I think it would kind of almost be a big deal if that did happen. Um, but, you know, theoretically, that's what this is testing for. Basically, there are no more actors at the current level of depth. We've tried them all. Um, that should never happen, though. LF Kevin Bacon. So if we do find Kevin Bacon, we're going to print again. Found KB at level depth. Um, tried actors and movies. And we're going to just print out how many actors we had to look over and how many movies we had to look over because that would be kind of interesting to see. Length of um, actor or tried actors and the length of tried movies. So that's going to tell us how many movies and how many actors we actually checked over. That's kind of an interesting thing. Else, and I'm just going to print here, IDK, something weird happened. Always good to have like the, oopsie, something weird happened um, case just for when you're, you're not imaginative to think of a situation where that would happen. Um, so we've got all of our cases covered here. Really, that's it. And I say that's it, knowing that it's we're, we're, we're nearing the one hour mark of recording, or at least raw recording. Um, we've kind of created the skeleton of this. And what you'll find in the next video, and it's, it's probably going to be another lengthy one, but we actually don't have that much more work to do. Um, we have to add in our caching functions. Um, I'll add the, those in you know, fairly soon. Um, and those functions are just going to store all of our actors and you know actor objects and movie objects to the database, um, and it's going to be the the, the couple of uh, functions that are actually responsible for scraping. Um, but aside from that, really all of this stuff is is done. We've got the actual main layout. The main loop is the hardest part because it's all of your logic. This is the brains of our program. Um, let me add a comment. Come on. I won't worry about that right now. I'll add that comment in later um, to explain this case right here. Um, but really, like we, we've created the brains, we've created the structure of the program, and now it's really about just filling it all in. It's kind of like creating a really, really complex ad lib paragraph, and we've created the, the whole structure with just a couple of blanks that we've got to fill in. And as you saw in the last section, you know, when we when we built out scrapers, it's not really that hard to build out scrapers. It's the brains behind scrapers and the 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 kind of structure of these complicated loops that's difficult. Um, so in the next video, we'll actually start filling this stuff in. That is, you know, honestly going to be a lot easier than this. It's going to be a lot less convoluted. If you have any questions about the code about anything that I didn't cover well enough, about something that I probably butchered the explanation for, just let me know. Um, send me a DM on Twitter, leave it in the comments or the, the course review. Um, reach out to me on Udemy. I think there's some way that you can reach out to your instructor that way. Um, so feel free to do that. Uh, really, honestly, just look over the code again. I'll publish the code on my GitHub and leave a link to that. Look over the code and kind of try to wrap your brain around the structure of all of this and understand you are probably smart enough to figure out a more intelligent way to do this. And we are going to improve this design later on. It'll be in um, two or three videos from now. We're going to improve the design of this scraper in, in a couple of fairly meaningful ways. Um, one of them, spoiler alert, has to do with our database and the caching and all of that fun stuff. Um, so we will go through that and make it more intelligent. And I know that even once we go through it, I'll probably miss some stuff or do some stuff in a dumb manner. Um, so understand that this is not necessarily the best way to do it. It is just a way to do it and a way to understand spiders and to create a spider to solve this unique problem. Um, 
But yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sticking through what is likely to be close to an hour of, um, uh, of spider development. That's that's a long time for me, and I've done this for a while, and I have a cheat sheet on the other screen showing me exactly what I need to write. So um, thank you so much for sticking through it. Like I've said before, reviews and comments and shares and all of that fun stuff helps. Um, giving feedback is really, really helpful as well. Kind of helps me know what I did wrong and what I did right. Um, so feel free to leave that in either the comments or the course reviews and take it easy. I will see you in the next video.